joining us for today's webinar. We're excited to, to kick off this year's uh, report on giving data collection process. Uh, as Mike mentioned, the survey dates are changing a little bit this year. So the survey will open on April 2nd and will close at the end of June 29th. Uh, so this is a little bit earlier than last year, and that's in response to feedback from participants who wanted to access their reports earlier. So everyone will have about three months to submit the data, and then you should have earlier access to your reports than, uh, than in previous years. And we'll also send each uh, person who's registered a recording of this webinar in the next couple of days. And along with that, we'll send you a toolkit that walks you through how to prepare to submit your data, uh, what information you need to gather, along with a look at the survey itself so that you can become familiar with the questions before the survey. And we want to, of course, make the submission process as easy as possible for you. So in addition to the toolkit, feel free to reach out to AHP or to Mike and his colleagues at ARI with any questions at any point in the process. Uh, so again, from AHP, thank you in advance for participating in this year's survey. Uh, we hear every year from our member organizations how valuable the report on giving and the benchmarking reports are as they evaluate their programs as they uh, demonstrate the value of philanthropy to their hospital leadership and, and C-suites, and of course, as they make the case for, uh, for additional resources. So it's your participation that makes the report so valuable, and, and we're very grateful for it. Um, so Mike, over to you. Great, well, thank you, John, I appreciate it. Um, just wanna make sure for everybody who's joined um, recently here, uh, that everybody can see my screen. What you should see is the um, landing page for the surveys.ahp.org uh, website where you would complete your uh, report on giving survey for this year. Uh, one thing I'll mention that uh, a couple people have joined after I just mentioned it and John mentioned it as well, just wanted to remind you that the deadline that you're gonna be seeing on each of the pages is not correct, but um, as John mentioned, it's about a month earlier this year. So it's June 29th, and uh, obviously we'll get that updated. Uh, so what I wanted to do, first of all, was, um, well, and also I'm just letting everyone know, I'm gonna mute everyone at this point, just so that we don't have any uh, feedback. And while I go through the um, showing you how to report, if you have any questions, please just, uh, send them to me, just type them in, and I'll uh, pause now and again to look down and see uh, see if there's something that I can uh, answer in real time as we're going through this. Okay, so what I've done right now is um, looking at the landing page, uh, when you log in to the survey, this is the page that you're gonna see. And if you need to so edit- This guy's like, any he, I mean, this, you're- Yeah, I had everybody muted. Sorry about that. Um, I'm trying to uh, make sure that that doesn't come through, but apparently it's not uh, not working correctly. Let me see. Unfortunately, the muting uh, control doesn't seem to be working on this, so I apologize if there's any uh, feedback, but I'm just gonna go ahead. Um, basically, the first link that you come to, as I mentioned, is the uh, personal information. If you need to change anything, if you wanted to, um, if there's something that's incorrect, 
you can just let uh, you can take care of that there. And this is the link to the survey. So, hey Helen, what we're doing here is you can see um, basically the first thing that you would do is um, note that you will complete the survey or not complete the survey. If you don't check any of these boxes, then you're not going to be able to access anything for the survey. So assuming that you would like to complete the survey, which we've already pre-checked here, um, you will be able to then access the survey. Uh, John had mentioned some instructions. Um, there's an entire toolkit here with this link that uh, gives you all the information that you would need to um, to report on this to your survey and some guidance on navigating the platform. Um, as he mentioned, we will send a copy of that to everyone on today's webinar, along with a link of the, uh, of the recording of the webinar. So the first uh, choice that you need to make here is right here, choose or change your survey version. Uh, basically, this gives you the ability to report uh, some demographic information and some key um, metrics if you choose the mini survey. And then the full survey would allow you to report in detail, especially in um, areas as far as uh, funds raised uh, in, in many different sections. Uh, your choice would probably depend on a couple of things. Uh, number one, if you don't have access to uh, revenue in detail by categories for your organization, then you would like, pro most likely choose the mini survey. So you would just provide us with some expense numbers, um, total production, total cash, and you will be able to compute ratios based on that, a cost to raise a dollar, return on investment but you won't be able to drill down into um, comparing yourself to uh, other groups because uh, you're not going to be able to have that much detail. So let me go ahead and choose mini survey first. So you just click on this and then I'm going to save and return to the menu. And you'll see what opened up here is the mini survey. So I might go ahead and click on this link. One thing you're going to notice here, there are some error messages. I pre-populated this uh, demo hospital with some um, data. And if you were completing the survey, you would not be able to um, proceed until you filled in certain uh, information. So please ignore these error messages that pop up. But when you're filling it out, uh, when you're filling it out, I would suggest paying attention to it because it is alerting you to something that you need to uh, either uh, enter or it's letting you know that perhaps a ratio or a number rather is uh, is either high or low compared to some other numbers that you provided. Um, so this is the this is the mini survey. You're going to see when we go throughout each section of this, there's going to be these uh, gray boxes. If you had participated, if your organization had participated in the previous fiscal year for 2016, uh, this, these boxes are going to be, be pre-populated with whatever information you provided. Um, if the person that, if it's the same person reporting, that name is an email address is going to show up here. Um, but for anything that's in a gray box, it's, uh, it's not dynamic. You can't change what's there. That's just giving you a guide from last year. So at this point, you could put in your contact information. You can choose your organization type, whether it's a single healthcare entity or a system. Um, and again, this is where it's helpful if you have a, a, a different person filling it out. You can see in this particular case that that person chose system. So if there was some question as to how to report, at least you would know how your organization reported last year, and that might 
provide you some insight as to how you want to handle it this year. Um, that's about it, really, for the for the um, background information. Um, then we pretty much get into some uh, the details. Net patient service revenue. Again, you can see the number from last year. Expenses. Um, this is actually broken down into direct, indirect, and operational. Um, if you would prefer, or if you don't have the ability to break these out, you could just enter a total in here for total fundraising expenses. Um, there's a space here for fundraising staff, both direct and indirect. And then uh, total cash, total production, number of gifts received, total number of donors. You can see when I hover over any of the areas where it's underlined, you're going to have a little pop-up that gives you an idea of uh, a quick definition on what should be reported there. For more detail on anything, if, that, if, the, if that's not sufficient, the uh, toolkit that I referenced that I'll send to everyone um, has a glossary at the end that has a lot, uh, a lot more terms and a little more um, substance as far as the definition than what would pop up here. And then the comment section here, and actually the comments on in any section on this report, uh, it's not so much asking for your opinion about the survey, but if there's any uh, supplemental information that you wanted to provide that would explain some of these numbers, if you wanted to put something in perspective, if you're in the middle of a fiscal or capital campaign, or if you had one last year or something that might explain fluct extreme fluctuations in your uh, expenses or cash or production, it would be helpful for us to know that because when we go through and start looking at the data in the database, um, it's, you know, we certainly want to make sure that uh, everybody entered what they intended to and it wasn't like someone left a zero off or something like that. So if you could supply that information, if it's, if it's pertinent, that would be great. Um, as you can see, there's not much information requested here. And it, if you had access to, if you looked at the toolkit and knew what you needed to provide, um, you know, as far as entering the data, it's not going to take you hardly any time at all. And at that point, you're done. So you would just save and return to the menu. And again, these all these problems that are popping up is just based on uh, information that's um, not really consistent for um, that. Uh, the, I'll mention again, the gray boxes are for last year. Okay, now we're back Was to... Was that all in last year's um, report, though? I'm sorry, what was that? When you submitted, when we went to submit the mini report last year, were mm -hmm. those gray boxes that represented the prior year numbers there? For the mini survey, they may not have been because the, the mini survey was only available for about the last month of the reporting. It's something that we, um, that AHP put together um, while, the, while the process was already uh, going on. So it's possible that some of those uh, fields didn't match up with the previous um, survey where it was, uh, in that case, there was like a core and then a core plus. So that's possible that it wasn't pre-populated. Uh, but for this year, um, all of those numbers, if you did participate, say, in the mini-survey last year, those numbers will be in there for the 2016 fiscal year. That's incredibly helpful. Oh, great. Yeah, that's that's basically it as far as the mini-survey. So what we would suggest is a couple of things when you're done um, to click on your fundraising ratios. This would give you sort of a sanity check um, before you leave the platform. Um, 
just sort of looking at numbers and seeing if this looks reasonable um, based on what you entered. The board monitors here will show up um, with calculations based on what you provided. Um, you know, if you're expecting your, you know, cost to raise a dollar to be, uh, <laughs> I didn't realize how the numbers are in here. Uh, the cost to raise a dollar is two dollars and thirty-two cents. That's uh, horrifically bad. So clearly, that would not be what you would be looking for there. Uh, and the ROI, actually, these are probably reversed based on the numbers that I put in. But the point would be that if you're looking at this, um, you should be able to um, know if, if perhaps you entered something that you didn't intend to, um, and then you can just go ahead and print that out. Um, the other thing that you could do is click on um, a PDF of the survey so you have a copy of what you submitted. And then the last thing that we would like you to do is where it says here, go to survey status. Um, when you click into this, hold on just a second. Let me go back to the other page here. You would just click um, right here that you've completed the survey. That will generate an automatic uh, response to us, and then we can uh, start looking at what was submitted. And if, you know, as I mentioned before, if there are any questions that we had, it will give us a heads up on uh, the fact that you're done. Uh, uh, we realize that even on the mini survey, it could be something where you have to. Uh, check with a number of different people. So just because you've um, put in the information, if you are not positive that it's um, that it's uh, final, then you know just leave that blank. Don't click the uh, completed box. Uh, but but again, when you are, just go ahead and click this, and it will uh, it will be generated. An email will be generated to us. Um, and I went through that kind of fast. Does anybody have any questions specifically about the mini survey? I think it's pretty straightforward. You're providing very, very top level summary information. And again, the caveat on that would be on the back end. Um, you know, AHP has um, a lot of reports that are available. There's some uh, that you can receive for free. There's a scorecard that will allow you to pick um, comparison groups to compare yourself, your organization with. And if you choose to participate in the mini survey, you'll see some comparative detail there from your organization, but for the most part, uh, it breaks everything out into revenue categories. And, and unfortunately, since you would not have provided that, it's not going to be an area where you're going to be able to compare yourself category by category. So that's just something to keep in mind. But again, you know, it, you may or may not be able to provide that level of detail. And this absolutely gives you um, return on investment, cost to raise a dollar, metrics that are very important to everyone. Okay, let me go in. Let me go ahead and change this. So again, we're back on the page here where we chose mini survey previously. What I'm going to do is choose full survey now and just hit save and return. And you're going to see what opens up here. If you remember previously, it just said mini survey and then we had one link. Now you can see that we have some preliminary questions here. There's a breakout of um, expenses. Let me do this before we start. Let me just not choose anything there yet. And then based on the fundraising performance, as I mentioned, there's a, a number of areas here where you can provide some very specific detail. Uh, let me go into the first area here, basic information. The first part of this is very similar to the mini survey where you're just providing your contact information. 
uh, changes a little here where we're asking for fiscal year additionally. But again, the same type of choice that's here, you're going to see in yellow, there are certain areas that are required. And based on whatever you would choose here, the menu would be slightly different. So if I'm choosing single healthcare entity, clearly it's going to allow me to choose what type of entity I am for 2017. If you reported in the prior year, it's going to show what uh, the person chose last year. But I'm not going to be able to enter anything here because I didn't choose system. I just chose um, single healthcare. So if I went back and, oh no, I wanted to do system. Okay, then clearly this is not going to be able to enter, but you will be able to provide information based on um, the type of organization that uh, that you chose. Um, net operating revenue. Hopefully, you could provide both numbers here for net for profit. Uh, net not-for-profit. Um, if you only have a total, then that's fine as well. Net patient service revenue, again, a very important number for metrics. Um, you can see here um, that you can put in the calculation method as well. This is re brought through from the previous year. Um, and then we, uh, number seven, I should point out, it's highlighted, so it's only required, though, if you're a Canadian-based organization. Now, based on the fact that we chose system up here, yes. You can see now for fundraising structure, this is opened up to us and it gives you an idea of what centralized, decentralized hub and spoke would be. Um, and then you can choose if you're, what, what would be the following model that would describe your system. Fundraising expense budget. So this is specifically for, in this case, would be your system. Again, it gives you the prior year. And the um, information in the prior year is very helpful when you get to these types of areas because um, it's obviously going to be tremendously different for a lot of organizations if you're reporting based on a system as opposed to a single entity. And then if possible, if you have, if you could provide the funding relationship um, and the percentage, that would be great as well. The comments here, again, um, we're looking for um, some explanation of something that you think would be helpful for this particular section of the report. Um, when we get to the end of the survey, there's, there's a couple of areas that I can show you to, if you wanted to just provide your um, opinion or a suggestion about the survey itself. But based on this, we'll just go ahead and save and return to the previous menu. Again, we'll ignore these error messages. But now you're at a point where you can start en entering your fundraising expenses. I closed this up before. Uh, before we started on this, but this is the place where you could choose your level of reporting. If any of you are familiar with the re the old report on giving survey on a different platform that AHP had up until last year, um, the level of expenses to report based on the report on giving would be summary only. So if you chose that, what will open up here is basically um, one link. And based on this link, you're going to be able to 
provide uh, expenses based on the three breakouts that we show here, direct and indirect human resources and, and overhead operational expenses, and then a total. Uh, again, if you aren't able to break out, give us the three buckets, then a total is fine. But um, just keep in mind that, that wherever you are not able to provide the detail that's asked for when you look at reports to compare yourself um, after the report uh, has closed, after the data collection process has closed rather, um, it's going to limit those comparisons. So again, this, this would be, if you're familiar with the report I'm giving previously, this would be what was asked for in as far as level of detail for expenses. But let's say that um, you decided that uh, you wanted to provide more detail. So you would go back into the link for fundraising expenses and then choose detail here. And again, I should have pointed this out before. What we had set up here, it will also tell you what uh, your predecessor, or if, if it's yourself, if you don't remember, what was reported last year for your organization. So each of the three buckets that we showed before where you only had one number, now you're going to have three links that correspond to that. And each one of the links, when you open it up, is going to show you a, a tremendous amount of detail within here. Uh, one one thing to, to remember, if you choose to report um, the expenses in detail, uh, you need to have someone at your organization uh, that has the privileges to uh, see and enter the comp compensation data you can see that's being asked for here. Um, so we would um, recommend that you contact AHP and give them the uh, credentials of that person, and then they can uh, set it up in the system so that that person would be able to see and enter the uh, compensation data. Because it could be obviously sensitive uh, if if someone who did not was not authorized to see that was uh, was asked to provide that. But as you can see, it goes into a lot of detail and. Um, you get the same type of pop-ups here that give you a heads up on what the category is. And then for the number of uh, staff, again, gives you some um, positions. Some of this may be very, very specific to your organization, the terms, the, the, the um, what do you call it? The <laughs> The titles may be slightly different, but uh, you know you should have a pretty good idea when you're going through this before you start um, who is direct and who's <coughs> indirect. And let me go across here so you can see that this doesn't just end at the edge of the screen here. And again, since we're asking for compensation data, it's it's important to, uh, I know in some surveys, if you don't have something, you put a zero in. Clearly, putting zeros in this area where you're talking about percentages and compensation would skew the data. So if you don't have any, if you don't have a position that corresponds or you don't aren't able to report that, just skip it and just go to the areas where um, where you, that will be specific to your organization. Um, okay, let me get back out of here. Okay, then you have the indirect. This is going to look very similar, um, with the exception of obviously the um, positions, maybe slightly different. Um, but it's the same type of um, information that's being asked for. And you have a lot of detail here. The thing that's great about this is if you are able to report in detail, when we get to the revenue section after we um, go through this expense area, the 
reports that I mentioned at the back end of this that you would have access to will be very, very useful because you're not just going to see a total, uh, you know, it's like total cash and, and total expenses or something. You're going to be able to see expenses and how they're um, allocated to certain areas based on the revenue that you um, that you collect and you're going to be able to get very specific uh, ratios based on that. But again, it's it's something that may or may not be available to you in that kind of detail. And then the third section here just has to do with uh, basically overhead. So non-labor expenses for fundraising. Just going through here and trying to provide um, the detail and breaking down the percentages um, for um, for people that are contracted or any other type of consultants that you have, accounting, et cetera. The prior year uh, expenses will be in here if you report it in detail. And then also the um, percent, excuse me, of the non-fundraising administration. Okay, then you're done with expenses. Here's the, the um, if you're looking at this to give as much detail as you can on uh, certain sections, I'd say that um, section E is the most important. If you're familiar with the prior report on giving, uh, this section is very similar. It may be pretty much exactly the same. But you can see that in the mini survey, we just asked for, and I'll go ahead and go down to the bottom here. In the mini survey, we just said, what's your total cash? What's your total production? Prior year would be populated here, number of gifts. Um, but in this area, you can see that uh, you have the ability to report um, in sections that will directly correspond to the expense section if you are able to give that detail. If you're not, it will still correspond to um, totals if you were able to give us the numbers in those buckets that I had mentioned in the first part of the expenses with uh, direct fundraising and direct and overhead. The um, important part of this is that depending on what you're entering here, there are going to be numbers that are going to be rolling down into cash and, and into production. And in some cases, depending on where you're answering, it's going to go into both cash and production. <laughs> so it's important if you are able to provide detail to give um, both sides of of the um, both sides of it, so that you're in a position to you would probably have an idea going into this what your total production and total cash were for the year. And um, you would want to be able to provide um, both of those numbers. So, for instance, um, and this is going to be in the toolkit, but if you were just looking at annual gifts, okay, the um, numbers that you're putting in here would go to both cash and production for um, the annual gifts, outright gifts. If you're in gift pledges, because again, those are um, they're secured, but they're not paid yet. So that number is going to go directly into production only. And then anything that you get in this section here would go directly into cash. So um, for instance, if you, for whatever reason, if you're going through here and you're only putting in your uh, pledge payments and neglected to put in your uh, pledges, then when you get to the end, and I showed you that uh, summary report that you can pull up, it's going to be very obvious to you that something's wrong because your ratios are going to be off um, because 
there's a tremendous amount that you should have in production that, that uh, was not reported. You just happen to go buy it. So keeping that in mind when you look at each one of these sections, I think would be helpful if when you get to the end of the survey, you're looking at numbers and you're thinking that everything seems right based on what you entered. Um, you know, this is an area where it would be helpful to go back and sort of keep that in mind as to how both cash and production are calculated. Um, but you can see here there's um, annual gifts, major gifts, corporate foundation gifts, planned giving, grants, special events. And again, in these areas here, if you want to um, give us some additional information about this uh, section other, um, it, clearly it's a catch-all category, but based on the way that um, these categories are set up, I would say that if you got to the end and you had a rather large number here, unless it's for a specific reason, uh, it might be a heads up that perhaps you should go back and maybe recategorize um, your numbers because uh, theoretically these other sections should cover most um, areas. And, and obviously if it's in an other category then from a comparison standpoint, it's not going to be as helpful. So does anyone have any questions about the the revenue category? It's not changed from, uh, I don't think in, in the last several years anyway. So that's, if you're, if you've participated previously, then it's, it's pretty much the same. Okay, let me get out of here. Okay, so now we're sort of in the home stretch here. If you're looking at the next couple of sections, um, they may or may not be applicable to your organization. So I would just take a look when you, if you finished entering the revenue, see if, if this is applicable to you. Once you go into each section, again, you can see it's very specifically looking at endowments here and campaigns. So this will be checked from the previous year. <laughs> if you were, if your organization was in a campaign and this um, was was reported last year, then these would be pre-checked. If you had endowment information, that's going to be here. And again, the space to just give us some extra information. And then there's a constituency giving section. So that's basically just looking at uh, trying to match the total that you provided in section E if you are able to. Um, provide this type of detail here, that would be the way that um, that you would try and reconcile what you have in here. And if you come through, if the total that you come up with is tremendously different, then it could be that uh, for whatever reason, you're not able to um, get all of the detail that's asked for here. And then there's another section on major gifts, planned giving, annual fund, special events. Um, and this is um, basically tracking where gifts came from. <coughs> Excuse me. And you may or may not have this information either. Um, but it's a it's a way of looking at what you have and trying to determine based on um, where it came from, uh, how efficient were you? Um, you can look at 
the detail that's provided here and see that if you are able to give that information, um, you would get an idea of what money you threw at certain areas that was very successful and maybe some other areas that were not. You might maybe adjust how you send out, um, how you publicize events and how you um, handle your uh, solicitations based on that. And then you can see there's a couple of other areas here uh, that are optional. Program emphasis. This would require someone who has a really good overview of your whole um, organization as far as fundraising um, to be able to go into here and determine if you, I mean, obviously it would be <laughs> it's somewhat easy if you don't have a program, but determining this level of emphasis is something that uh, probably someone who's at the uh, top of your organization would be best equipped to look at. And so the last section here is use of funds. If you're familiar with the previous report on giving, this was a section that was in the report on giving. It was not in the um, benchmarking survey. If you were used to this platform and um, provided benchmarking uh, detail previously. So this is just basically asking the, the rest of the report, we're asking, you know, how did you get the money? Where were your expenses? How much are, how much were your expenses based on every department, depending on the detail? This is asking you to provide the dollars distributed um, for the reporting year for each of the program areas. So uh, clearly this requires someone that uh, you would have to have that um, ability to be able to see where things went. But if you if you are able to, or if someone in your organization is able to, um, again, this is very helpful because then you can see, um, based on what was raised, where it went to. And depending on the year that you're um, collecting data for, or that we're collecting data in, the, in this survey, these numbers, as you can see, could be tremendously different if you had a capital campaign, um, maybe the construction during the capital campaign is slim to none perhaps, but then once the campaign is over and you're assigning things, the, the construction level might be increased tremendously. So and again, it's, it's helpful, but it's certainly not required. And it really just depends on the level of detail that you can, uh, that you can provide. Um, and that's the that's the end of the survey. So again, you would go back up to the top, and once you're happy with what uh, you've put in, I go ahead and mark this completed. And then it's the same the same type of uh, of suggestions that I had with the mini survey, um, looking at your fundraising ratios. You saw it in the other one, I had entered some of this data in the mini survey. It's not showing up here because I didn't enter anything in the detailed survey. But you can see that when I was showing you the mini survey, the only thing that you saw was this section A and B because the only thing that was provided was these expenses and then total cash, total production. So you never saw anything below here. But this will give you an idea of what I was talking about when you get into the categories. If you are able to provide the detail for revenue um, and also for expenses, um, you're going to see a tremendous amount of uh, detail here. And you're going to see not just your overall cost to raise a dollar or return on investment. You're going to see it based on each of the categories by cash and then also by production. Uh, what that will uh, give you is when we're talking about the reports that would be available to you on the platform, it's going to give you many more data points 
that you're going to be able to compare yourself with based on whatever comparison group of organizations that you would like to. Um, if you're a community hospital and you just want to compare yourself to community hospitals, then you can choose that at the end um, of the process. And if you're, uh, depending on where you're located, if you, if you want to focus on size of uh, how many beds, something like that, whatever criteria that you would like to use, um, you can see what's available uh, for comparison groups. And this will be very helpful. Um, again, the um, PDF of the survey, we would just recommend printing that out just so that you have a copy of it. Uh, the database, as I mentioned, is open um, until um, June 29th. So let's say that you completed the survey and at some point you get some additional information. If the database is not closed yet, um, you can still log back in. You can uncheck this. You can put in the information that you um, are revising or, or some additional information that you have and then uh, go back and mark it completed again. Um, you know, I think that what I was trying to point out was that it's helpful for us to um, see who's completed the survey, but I didn't want to give you the impression that once you hit complete that you have to live with what's there. Uh, I think it's important to you know feel comfortable with what you have, and if you don't feel if you feel that there's something that came up or some inf additional information, please feel free to log back in. Uh, until June 29th and, and revise the data because the whole point would be that we want to make sure that what you have in there is what you intended. Um, that's about it as far as showing you the platform. Are, did anyone have any questions or any areas that you wanted me to go back over that weren't, uh, maybe I went through it a little too quickly? Okay. Well, um, John, did you have any additional information you wanted to provide? Uh, nothing else for me. Thanks for uh, for leading us through that. Okay. Well, if anyone, uh, as as John mentioned, uh, what we will be doing, we've recorded this, so we will be sending an email with um, the um, toolkit that I mentioned that has all of the information that you would be able to uh, look at to see what's provided, what you need to gather to enter the information. It also gives you some really specific examples, especially that area where I was sort of speaking in the revenue section about um, making sure that uh, the numbers go into cash or production or both, depending on what's, uh, what you have. Uh, it will give you some examples because I don't think that Based on the way it's set up, it may or may not be intuitive to everyone where a number, what, what a number would go into for a total, whether it's cash or production or both. And hopefully the examples there will be helpful um, to um, lead you through that. And if no one has any questions, I'd just like to thank everyone again for joining us for this. And we'll be in touch with that email. With, um, with the additional information. Thank you.